That was a tune called Banjo Neek by Walt Koken. It's an original tune. I emailed him a while back asking if you'd mind if I put together a series of short videos introducing some of the aspects of his technique, and he said to go ahead. So I'm finally getting around to doing it. Um, Walt Koken is is my very, very favorite banjo player of all time, which is a really strong statement. There are a lot of wonderful banjo players, but he, to me, uh, represents what is best about old-time claw hammer banjo. One of the things that makes Walt's playing so unique and interesting is that he keeps the banjo ringing at all times through the use of pull-offs. So it gives it this, it gives the banjo this constant motion, almost a calliope-like sound. And he uses alternate string pull-offs and regular string pull-offs to keep these strings vibrating at all times. Um, the opening lick to banjo Nick is a series of pull-offs. Uh, first is an alternate string pull-off. Uh, you're doing a downstroke on the third string, doing an alternate string pull-off on the eighth fret of the second string, and then doing a downstroke on the third string for the first half of that lick, and then you're just going to do a regular pull-off. You're going to fret your 8th fret on the 2nd string, you're going to do a pull-off, and then you're going to do a downstroke on your open 1st string. Uh, this is the second half of that lick. So put, all, put those two halves together, it sounds like this. And then once you've got it, once your muscles understand how to make that movement, you want to speed it up. And that gives you a real sense, just that one lick is a real window into Walt Koken's playing because it shows you how he's able to keep the strings ringing at all times. The other thing he does is because he plays up the neck a lot, he's pulling off from high notes to really low notes. For example, in this lick that we just went over, he's pulling off from that 8th fret 2nd string to the open 2nd string. wide gap between those two notes, the 8th fret uh, note and the open note, is really big and it's an interesting way to, to give the banjo constant motion. Now, in terms of learning some of the techniques of Walt's playing, I think it's best if you just take this portion, this, this middle portion of the fretboard, and just start to play with it and learn your way around that area. One of a, a great um, exercise to do in getting used to this area is uh, by doing a series of pull-offs from your eighth, tenth, twelfth frets on your second string, and finally a pull-off on your twelfth fret of your first string, and then that sounds like this. And then, of course, once you know it and can play it well, it's all the notes are clear and precise, you can speed it up. The other thing Walt does a lot is he uses a double stop pull-off technique. Uh, so he's pulling off two strings simultaneously out of a, a two-finger chord form. So for example, if you take a two-finger G, um, which is, um, I would do it by putting my ring finger down on the ninth fret of the first string, and my first finger down on the eighth fret of my second string, it's a nice two-finger G chord, easy to grab. If you pull off simultaneously with your first and ring fingers, it creates another kokeny, uh, a kokenism, if you will, that I think is really interesting and fun to listen to. It's also the beginning of his version of Train on the Island, so.
So anyway, the, 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 that's sort of a very basic um, window into Walt's playing. I'm going to do a series of these Coconology videos that will hopefully unpack a little bit of his incredible technique. Um, so stay tuned, and if you have any questions or suggestions uh, of passages of Walt Koken's playing that you might want to see, uh, let me know. But uh, next time we'll go into um, a real interesting technique uh, where he drops thumb, he he drops his thumb and pops into sort of a hammer on into a chord. I don't know what to call it, but um, we'll we'll go over it next video. So uh, thanks a lot.